Dying Earth is a subgenre of science fantasy or science fiction which takes place in the far future at either the end of life on Earth or the end of time, when the laws of the universe themselves fail. Themes of world weariness, innocence, wounded or otherwise, idealism, entropy, permanent exhaustion, depletion of many or all resources such as soil nutrients and the hope of renewal tend to dominate. Topic: <laughs> Genre The Dying Earth genre differs from the apocalyptic subgenre in that it deals not with catastrophic destruction, but with entropic exhaustion of the Earth. The genre was prefigured by the works of the Romantic movement. Jean-Baptiste Cousin de Grainville's Le Dernier Homme narrates the tale of Omegaris, the last man on Earth. It is a bleak vision of the future when the Earth has become totally sterile. Lord Byron's poem, Darkness, 1816, shows Earth after the sun has died. Another early example is La Fin du Monde, The End of the World, aka Omega, The Last Days of the World, written by Camille Flammarion and published in France in 1893. The first half of the novel deals with a comet on a collision course with Earth in the 25th century. The last half focuses on Earth's future history, where civilizations rise and fall, humans evolve, and finally Earth ends as an old, dying, and barren planet. Another early and more famous science fiction work to utilize the familiar dying Earth imagery was H. G. Wells's famous novella The Time Machine 1895. At the end of this work, the unnamed time traveler travels into the far future, where there are only a few living things on a dying Earth. He then returns to his own time to relate his tale to a circle of contemporaries. Two brooding works by William Hope Hodgson would elaborate on Wells's vision. The House on the Borderland 1908 takes place in a house besieged by unearthly forces. The narrator then travels without explanation and perhaps psychically into a distant future in which humanity has died and then even further, past the death of Earth. Hodgson's The Night Land 1912 describes a time, millions of years in the future, when the sun has gone dark. The last few millions of the human race are gathered together in a gigantic metal pyramid, the last redoubt probably the first arcology in literature, under siege from unknown forces and powers outside in the dark. A work by the early French science fiction author J. H. Rosny Ain, La Mort de la Terre 1910, deals with the last, scattered generation of an evolved humankind on an exhausted, desert earth and their encounter with a new type of mineral metallic life. In some ways it reads like the inversion of his earlier Les Zypas 1887, in which early humans encounter and battle an utterly alien and incomprehensible form of life. From the 1930s onwards, Clark Ashton Smith wrote a series of stories situated in Zothic, the last continent of Earth, Smith said in a letter to L. Sprague de Camp, dated November 3, 1953. Zothic, vaguely suggested by theosophic theories about past and future continents, is the last inhabited continent of Earth. The continents of our present cycle have sunken, perhaps several times. Some have remained submerged, others have re-risen, partially, and rearranged themselves. The science and machinery of our present civilization have long been forgotten, together with our present religions. But many gods are worshipped, and sorcery and demonism prevail again as in ancient days. Oars and sails alone are used by mariners. There are no firearms—only the bows, arrows, swords, javelins, etc. of antiquity. Although not technically set on a dying Earth, many of the sword and planet stories of the early 20th century set on Mars—most notably Edgar Rice Burroughs's Barsoom series and works influenced by it, such as the Eric John Stark stories of Lee Brackett and C.L. Moore's series focusing on Northwest Smith—share similarities with the genre. In these stories, ancient and exotic Martian or other civilizations have undergone a decadent decline, enlivened by the presence of demonic adversaries from past ages. The fact that scientists had seriously speculated that Mars had once borne life, which had by the present almost or, perhaps entirely, died out, gave a special entropic kick to these escapist adventures. Under the influence of Smith, Jack Vance wrote the short story collection The Dying Earth. The collection would have several sequels. These works gave the subgenre its name. Examples <laughs> 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 H. P. Lovecraft and Robert H. Barlow. Till Aethes, 1935, is a tale of the slow fading of human civilization and the extinction of all life on Earth, as the planet became a desert under the sun that has expanded into a red giant. The story centers on a male protagonist named Ull, the last of his tribe, and his journey across lands and abandoned cities in hopes of finding water, shelter and other survivors. Don A. Stewart. Knight, 1935. Short story. 
As an unexpected side effect from an experimental anti-gravity device, a test pilot is sent countless billions of years into the future. The Milky Way has been reduced to less than a light year in diameter, and the dead Earth is tightly locked to a much larger and colder red sun. All the gas in the atmosphere, except for neon and helium, is frozen solid. A huge city contains the frozen remains of humans, and the machines humanity had perfected are dead due to the superconductivity caused by the cold. Edmund Hamilton — The City at World's End 1951, and the comic book story, "'Superman Under the Red Sun' from Action Comics No. 300 1963. Arthur C. Clarke — The City and the Stars 1956, a revision and expansion of the earlier novella, "'Against the Fall of Night". John Brunner — Catch a Falling Star, an extended version of the 100th Millennium, first published as, "'Earth is But a Star' 1958, which features in the Broderick Anthology, 2001, below. An early example of a far future tale influenced by Vance. Brian Aldiss — Hot House 1962, also known as The Long Afternoon of Earth. The Earth has locked rotation with the sun that has increased output, and plants are engaged in a constant frenzy of growth and decay, like a tropical forest enhanced a thousandfold. A few small groups of humans still live, on the edge of extinction, beneath the giant banyan tree that covers the entire day side of the Earth. Paul Anderson — Epilogue 1962. A novella about a starship from Earth on its way to a new solar system, but which due to malfunction returns to its original solar system again three billion years into the future. The Sun has become a red giant, and life on Earth has been replaced by cybernetic organisms, descendants of human technology. Lynn Carter — Giant of World's End 1969, and following prequels. Sword and sorcery fantasy novels set on a decadent far future Earth in which all the world's land masses have supposedly drifted back together to form a last supercontinent called Gondwain. M. John Harrison — A series of short stories and novels set in Viriconium from 1971 onwards. Viriconium is the capital city in which much of the action takes place. Viriconium lies on a dying Earth littered with the detritus of the millennia, seemingly now its own hermetic universe where chronology no longer applies. Michael Moorcock the Dancers at the End of Time series 1972 to 6. Hideyuki Kikuchi, Vampire Hunter D series. CJ Cherry, Sunfall 1977 to 2004, a collection of short stories set in various locations on Earth in the far future. The tone, themes and fantasy conventions employed in this collection differ by story. These were reprinted in the collected short fiction of CJ Cherry. Doris Pizzichia Earthchild 1977, in which the last human being on Earth faces competition from the world-spanning alien creatures that have devastated the planet. George R. R. Martin — Dying of the Light 1977, a novel set on Warlorn, a world whose course is taking it into the far reaches of space, where all life on the planet will die. Philip Jose Farmer — In Dark is the Sunday 1979, a tribesman from the distant future quests across the landscape of a dying Earth. As with much of Dying Earth. Science fiction, this text ruminates on the nature of ending, and the meaning of time itself. Gene Wolfe — The Book of the New Sunday 1981 chronicles the journey of a disgraced torturer named Severian to the highest position in the land. Severian, who claims to have a perfect memory, tells the story in first person. The book takes place in the distant future, where the sun has dimmed considerably. Wolfe has stated that Vance's series directly influenced this work. The book has several associated volumes. Daryl Schweitzer — The Shattered Goddess 1983, fantasy novel set at the end of man's dominion over Earth, in the interval between the death of the last deity of the former age and the rise of the first of the new. Followed by Echoes of the Goddess 2013, a prequel short story collection. Michael Shea — Nift the Lean 1982, a series of sword and sorcery tales set in a far future age where demons and alien entities vie for dominion over the Earth. A later story set in the same universe involved a mashup with Vance's Kugel the Clever. Damien Broderick, ed. Earth is But a Star, Excursions Through Science Fiction to the Far Future 2001, an anthology of canonical dying Earth short stories mostly set on Earth in the Far Future, interwoven with specially commissioned critical essays on the dying Earth theme. Greg Bear, City at the End of Time 2008, a novel that is a homage to William Hope Hodgson's The Nightland. Jason Aaron, the Last Days of Midgard 2013, a comic book miniseries for Thor, God of Thunder Comics in early 2014, where all Father Thor, sits at the end of time overseeing both the rebuilding of old Asgard and a dying planet Earth after humanity killed its ecosystem, the race itself dying off as a result. Rick Remender 
Lo 2014, a comic series set billions of years in the future where the rapid expansion of the sun forces humanity to live underwater. Al Ewing — Time Alone Shall Murder All the Flowers 2015, preceding the last days of Midgard storyline by Jason Aaron, taking place in the title Loki, Agent of Asgard where Loki went back to his old ways and pushed humanity into killing their own world and themselves as a consequence. This left him to rule over a planetary graveyard. See also Apocalyptic and post-apocalyptic fiction